Hello, this is Scott Manley here. Following on with my little uh, tutorial for career mode, we have a plane heading out on a visual survey mission, and uh, it's going to be a bit, little bit of a flight. So I thought I'd show you this. This is uh, in flight mode, IVA, internal vehicle activity or something. It's the opposite of an EVA. And you get into it by pressing C, right? C for cockpit view. Uh, you can also get into it by clicking on the portraits, but I know a lot of people click on the portraits and they select IVA and there's no corresponding button at this time to get out of the cockpit, so you have to go and look up the manual. So yeah, from inside you can drag the view around with the right mouse button, you can see the in-flight nav ball and everything, and unfortunately the nav ball doesn't appear to be showing the uh, destination here, whereas this one does. I'm running this whole thing at four times time acceleration and it does seem to be making the thing far too squirrely. So I'm just going to slow things down and turn it around. There, back on course. I guess the, I guess it might be near those mountains there. Oh yeah, speaking of mountains, mountains is a biome and we should be collecting scientific data. So uh, let me see, crew report over the water, uh, we already have shore shores, but do we have a temperature report while flying over shores? Yes, we have collected temperature data and everything. And at this point I realize that I have forgotten to bring uh, goo canisters and I have also forgotten to bring an antenna. Yeah, if you do this, it would be a good idea to bring goo canisters and an antenna. Uh, well, never mind, let's uh, just make make a best of what we've got. So we're now getting a little more inland, get temperature from over the grasslands. And we're getting close to those mountains. Now, I, in a minute, I guess, we'll be hitting highlands. I'm just guessing because the, the altitude is getting, or the altitude of the terrain is getting higher. Yeah, that's grasslands. So we're going to keep doing this until we get highlands. Log temperature, grasslands. Nope, I don't want grasslands. I want your highlands. Highlands! There! So that's three biomes, three temperature readings from three different biomes. And the next thing we want, we've got highlands. I'm hoping that we're going to get close enough to mountains to qualify for mountain data. In fact, let's just turn over those peaks there, right? So to guarantee it, I shall fly over those peaks and those will surely give me mountain data. Mountains are actually one of the harder ones for you to collect just kind of randomly by land landing on it. I mean, I've had capsules come down in the mountains and literally land on the side of the mountain, roll down the side and get destroyed. So it's a bad idea to try and land in the mountains unless you know what you're doing. Uh, the mountains rise up from the ground and it tells you all sorts of awesome stuff. And we get material studies just while flying, so that's actually not so interesting. The only thing is, because I don't have an antenna, collecting a crew report is pointless because I'm going to have to abandon it, won't I? There, we're pr it looks like we're pretty close. You can tell you're getting close when it appears very high in the sky, since they it basically points to like the maximum altitude or whatever. So we must be really close to where this thing is. There we go. We are entering area D81JZ. So I need to do a crew report, crew report, and ignore the one that was previously there. Ah, but we got crew data for the mountains after all. So we have uh, four temperature readings. We have a crew reading. And we've got all our temperature data, so the next thing we want to do is land this thing, and I guess... So, now now's landing. Landing is, of course, not something that everybody can do right away. If you've played other flight sims, you might be able to just about figure out how to land something like this. You know, once you've built an aircraft, it pretty much flies like a real aircraft. Uh, of course, there's no instrument landing system or anything. I, on the other hand, I've purposely fitted it with these parachutes so you can land it practically anywhere and since I haven't collected scientific data from the surface in the mountains that's what I'm gonna go for I'm hoping I'm hoping I can find a nice little flat spot which still qualifies as mountains so you see there's like dangerous peaks there I don't want to land on those but there's a little kind of some um, I don't know how you call them, foothills, I guess, that are still qualifying as mountains. So I'm going to get in, fly over them, low as possible, and then hit the space bar to deploy, not destroy, to deploy the parachute. Just get in close and deploy. Excellent. Okay, slow does down, and you might want have to adjust your attitude using the, using the reaction wheels inside. Watch the wings. 
Ah, oh, perfect touchdown here. Hit the brakes. Great. So are we in the mountains? Observe the material bay. The material bay says, yes, the materials have been changed by being in the mountains. Because being in the mountains is all sorts of amazing. So Jebediah can jump out and he can, do a, he can take the data from the cockpit and we can do a crew report while we're here. Ah, this is a very precarious situation. We are floating in the air above a space plane which is sitting on a slope in the mountains. That is pretty precar precarious as these things go. I'm going to store the data in there. And now EVA report. And I don't think a spacesuit was entirely necessary, but it was pretty useful to have that extra science. I'm going to grab... Uh, no, I don't want to do that. I want to grab the science from that thermometer. And then we can board and rerun the science experiment there. The temperature readings are quite literally nominal. And that's us. Oh wait, no it isn't. I should have done a crew report from that do that location. Ah, oh, well, okay. So, yes, I make plenty of mistakes. <laughs> it's quite normal. You know, Embrace your mistakes, live with your mistakes, because the mistakes will sometimes be some of the funniest moments. So there we go, we got some more science, and next we're going to find something else to do. Okay, so let's see what else we have available in terms of contracts. What have we got active, actually? We still have the test this flea while landed. Again, the testing parts while landed is such a no-brainer, it's like free money. We also have this one, test an LVT-45 swivel liquid-fueled engine. Uh, so yeah, this is another no-brainer. We just put a couple of engines against each other. Fi engine fight! They're fighting to see which one can move us, and thankfully the RT-5 isn't winning. So we'll just, uh, it's burned out now. Let's throttle down and collect our reward. Okay, now we've got both of those out of the way. Let's oh, actually man. go for the orbit Kerbin, right? The other, the other testing options are you have to test the item at specific altitudes and everything. And none of these, this might actually work, mm -hmm. but we'd have to be very careful. Now, you see, this would be opening it too high up, uh, given that at these speeds you might actually destroy the parachute. We could test our MK-55. Hmm. How big is this? <laughs> test the Rocco brand decoupler. Oh, yeah, actually, that's a very large one. Not going to do that. However... The TR2 stack separator, that might actually make sense. Except that we'd have to launch it at particular altitudes. I'm just going to select Orbit Kerbin and we'll go for it. So we have one contract. Now, before launching to orbit, let's uh, make a few upgrade a few things. First of all, I suggest upgrading the launch site. Uh, so right click on the launch site and upgrade it so you can have bigger rockets. Um, Right click on the mission control and upgrade that. And then right click on the tracking station and upgrade that. So that's took a bunch of your cash, so you still have about 100,000. But what this has given us, these two together will give you maneuver nodes. So that means you can adjust your maneuvers and try them out while in orbit. And this one will let you use bigger rockets. We also have about 64 science to spend. And before going into orbit, well, the main ones, you're probably not interested in this one. That's kind of useful, but I wouldn't worry about it. General construction helps you when you're building bigger rockets, not with these small ones. Advanced rocketry, on the other hand, gives you the bigger fuel tank. And given that part count is going to be your main limit, this will actually be quite useful. So let's get that. Okay, how do we build a rocket which goes to orbit? Well, you're going to need a capsule is the first thing. Now, going to orbit, you're going to be wanting to bring some science back with you, so I would suggest throwing some science instruments on the side of this. Again, do a pair of these things high up. You need a parachute so you can land it. You're going to need... Um, we have a parachute on the front. We're going to need a heat shield underneath so that you can survive re-entry. We should probably put a couple of thermometers on because thermometers are useful to have. There we go. So that will be the thing that returns to the planet Kerbin. It'd be nice if we can take one of these, um, one of these uh, material bays into space, at least one, because that will uh, let us do the science while we're up there. So let's put these here. 
And I'm going to build an upper stage, which uses this LV909 Terrier liquid fueled engine. So we're going to put this fuel tank, I'm going to put a little engine on it. This will be our upper stage. And then below that, we're going to put a stack decoupler and a, lo a longer rocket here. So we'll put like three of these. And I would do the LVT 45s because it actually gives you more control of your rocket. Okay, I think this will be sufficient. So we're going to put uh, perhaps put some fins on it to keep it stable. The Delta Deluxe is there, or we have an AVT winglet, or we could just have these little ones. Let's put three of these on. This is just to help keep the thing straight. So that is our rocket. I think the only thing I might want on it is some extra power. Let's put some power ba some batteries on it as well. There, so that, that will actually make our spacecraft... Oh, we've got to double those up. The reason I'm putting extra power on is because um, the steering of this upper stage entirely, entirely relies on the electrical power in this thing. If you don't have it, you could find yourself in some serious trouble. And once again, we get Jebediah Kerman as our astronaut. That's fine because he has some serious uh, piloting skills. Let's just take a look at our status. I'm going to bring this up. Our goal is to achieve orbit. So to achieve orbit, well, you've probably seen this in a bunch of other videos. What you have to do is go up and to the side. And you want to go, when you're facing north like this, you want to go to the right. That's eastwards because the planet is rotating that way, and the planet's rotating at about 175 meters per second. You need to get up to a speed of about 2250, and so adding in that 175 is good. So throttle to 100, stabilizer on, just start a little bit of a turn over here. It doesn't seem we're accelerating quite as fast as I would like. Perhaps we need some, uh, some good old fashioned solid rocket boosters, but I think we're gonna be fine here. I'm just going to make sure that I don't turn too fast here. I'm just going to enable the SAS for a little. And when SAS is enabled, you'll see in the bottom left the yaw indicator increasing. If this ever goes too far this way, or goes too far the other way, it's, it, it's basically indicating that you're exceeding certain control limits and you're going to lose control. So just keep an eye on if it starts to go too far over or if it starts to, to reverse. If it starts to reverse, that is because you are starting to exceed the uh, aerodynamic limits of the vehicle. But I've just let that go down. We want to get this down to about 45 degrees, which is about here when we reach about 10 kilometers. That just seems to be like a good number. There we go, we're now starting to really move sideways, pick up some real speed here. The thing that's keeping us stable most of the time is just these aerodynamic fins. You can turn the stability control on and off with the T key, and uh, Jebediah will do his best to do this. There we go. Now, you notice I have this RT10 decoupler. I realized when I looked at that contract to test it that it would have been too high and too slow. So we burn out the stage and separate, and now, yes, now we really need stability control. You see how we almost began to lose that there? We don't accelerate nearly so fast now. Hopefully we will be able to get into orbit with this thing. We might be going lower and lower here. But, uh, I don't know, we'll find out. We're accelerating at about 1G, and I can go to the map, bring up the map. Yeah, we're still going up. The important thing to look at is, see this, it says Kerbin Apoaps 36 kilometers. Underneath it, it says T minus 45 seconds. Now, if that number starts decreasing, it means you are not accelerating fast enough to get into orbit and you are going to fall back. Uh, so that's the main thing to be concerned about. If that's still going, if that's going down, then you want to lift your nose up and get yourself going higher and higher. But where we are right now, we're actually doing pretty well. In fact, this is probably going to be, be one of my more efficient orbits, given this spacecraft. I think you might want to have a bigger and badder spacecraft, ultimately. But I think also this stage has plenty of, of fuel to actually get you up into orbit and get you back from orbit. So it's not too bad. And, and I think if we add some... 
some uh, solid rocket boosters to that first stage, it'll get us into space a little faster. So I'm just keeping myself pointed right down the middle of this prograde marker here. That's the position where we're getting the most efficient acceleration, basically the least amount of penalty from turning. And our apoapse goes up, probably stop it before it gets to about 100, press X to stop it. And you see, look, we're, we're practically into orbit now already. To get into orbit, you need to be above 70 kilometers. There we go. Zipping along there. Zipping along. Can I collect temperature from this altitude? Oh, look, I haven't collected temperature from the upper atmosphere. That's good. I'm going to keep that data. And how about this mystery goo? Now we've already got that. How about materials bay? Ah, there, we haven't collected materials bay, but you know, we're going to go into space. We can collect that data when we're there. Okay, time. Once we're above 70 kilometers, what you want to do with your time acceleration is stop it. And then you're going to switch to a different form of time acceleration. We're now above the atmosphere. Uh, that means that the atmosphere is not slowing us down. It means we have complete control of our vehicle. It means that uh, we can predict exactly where it's going to go. And that means that the game can put you on rails. What I'm going to do is click on the orbit here, right at this point here. This is the apoapsis. That is the furthest you are going to be from the planet. And I've pointed out that if you just mouse around, you can see where the orbit would actually be. That little blue spot is where the orbit is. I'm going to do something here called creating a maneuver node. So I click, left click, and then say add maneuver. Now the maneuver we want to do is to accelerate along this. See when we, when we were flying up we were accelerating along that? Well, what you do is you grab the same symbol. You can see here this is the same symbol here. So we just want to pick that up and drag it to simulate or plan a maneuver. And you see as I'm dragging it, it's creating a yellow dotted orbit. And here, by doing that, it says our new periaps on this orbit is 21 kilometers. So if we just do that a little more, we should be able to get it up to above 70. 37. You'll be able to tell when you're getting close because what will happen is the periaps and apoaps will actually switch positions. Because the periaps is the closest point and the apoaps is the furthest point. Yeah, that's pretty good. So it tells us that if we fire our engines in three minutes and five seconds, for five seconds at 100% thrust, we will accelerate to, by 124 meters per second, and we will end up in orbit. This, what this means is you have to point it at the blue maneuver node. See that here? This is where you want to point it. Bingo, right along that, just and use stability control to hold it there. And then while you're here, just, uh, you know, you can right click, or sorry, left click, and then warp to next maneuver. So it'll actually perform the time warp for you. There's nothing to see outside here. We're just going to have a sunset. So it's going to time accelerate for us, and it's got about 57 seconds to go. So I'm going to wait until we get a little closer. You can time accelerate just a touch, but beware. You know, don't go too fast. Don't go past the node, because once you go past the node, you are falling back to the surface. Okay, 10 seconds to go. What I'm going to do is press the Z key or the Z key, depending upon which country you're in. Bingo! And then this will decrease, and I want to press X when it hits close to the bottom. There. Excellent. And so now, since the lowest point of our orbit is above 70 kilometers, we are safely in a stable orbit. So uh, we're going to finish up here in the next episode. We'll uh, collect the science and return to the planet Kerbin in a ball of fire. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.